Ah, hello. This is a truly momentous occasion, for the BBC have chosen me from the many hundreds of actors who are out of work and available to be the very first voice to be heard in mono headphone. Now, in order to experience the full effect of this new concept in sound technology, it's extremely important that... Oh, thank you very much. That the uh, special mono headphone is worn the correct way on the head. Now, the reason for this is that the sound being transmitted through your mono headphone has been specially treated by the BBC's new Babel Fish modulator. This sound, which has been scrambled, intensified, cross-patched, dolbied, scrambled, unscrambled, scrambled again, and bounced off a very large piece of toast, relies on the open ambience of the opposite ear to counterbalance the astrometric pressure on the uh, recipient eardrum. Now, you can just hold this mono headphone with one hand uh, against the one ear, with your elbow on the table. Um, then uh, you can... Uh, this uh, doesn't, of course, leave both hands free to applaud. Uh, now, uh, can I uh, have your head? Is it now? Yes. Uh, on... Uh, excuse me. Don't put it on the other ear. Uh, keep it well off the other ear. Um, so you can now applaud, can't you, if you, if you w wanted to. Try it. Thank you, that's enough. Uh, now, uh, next card, I think, don't you? Yes. Now, assuming you've got the hang of the thing, let me tell you a little about... That'll do, thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Um, uh, uh, you're about to hear. Let me tell you a little about the programme you're about to hear. You see, as many of you will have already realised, perhaps the main reason for the gigantic success of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy on BBC Radio was the choice of actor to play the narrator. The BBC, quite naturally, wanted the very best an actor who would bring to the part stature and respect. And I can tell you, I was absolutely thrilled when they came to me and said, he wasn't available, and would I like to play the part? Well, anyway, the radio show was an enormous success, and they made an LP of it. The BBC didn't. They, for some reason, chose not to. But this was a great success, and so was the paperback. In fact, it was top of the uh, bestseller list for uh, ages. And uh, Douglas Adams went round all the W.H. Smiths all over the country uh, signing copies of it. And in fact, uh, they've got to the interesting situation now where he signed so many that an unsigned uh, copy by Douglas Adams is worth more than one uh, he signed. Uh, he won't take me for that. Never mind. Now, um, Letters to the Radio Times. Now, here's a letter we had. Um, it was entitled, Hitchhiker, No Pictures, Please. Many congratulations to Douglas Adams and company for the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Due to the effective advertising of the second series, I suspect that the small but devoted following who first stumbled on Arthur Dent and his problems in the spring of 1978 has been joined by most of the population of Great Britain. This is good. However, I have a nagging fear that the BBC may think of cashing in on the radio success by transferring the series to television. Please remember Douglas Adams' comment, Radio Times, 19th to 25th of January, on the, advantages of, uh, on the advantages of radio as a medium. Leave us with the pictures in our imagination, please. Now, here's another. In just about 50 years of radio and latterly television listening and watching, this strikes me as a most... Fatuous, inane, childish, pointless, can't want it in dribble. Well, I'll follow with that. Now, um, they are, you'll be pleased to hear, they are doing a series on television, and you might well be wondering if they would invite me to recreate my role as narrator on television, and they did. And I realise now how important my contribution to the series is. Naturally, I held out for better terms than I had for the radio series. I mean, a man can't live forever on free tickets for any questions and my word. Although, to be fair, last night they sent me a whole book of tickets for the proms. Anyway, they weren't going to get me on television for what's on Wogan, that's for sure. Now, in the end, we came to quite good terms, really. Well, I say quite, quite good-ish terms, really, on, on, on the whole. I agreed that they could use my voice only, and in return, I would star in a show of my very own. And they kept their word, this is it. 
Well, they did say no expense would be spared, and they haven't. They've cut all of my expenses. I'm even sharing a dressing room with a weatherman. All gum boots, plastic max, and seaweed. Now, let me tell you about uh, part one of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Arthur Dent is played by Simon Jones, Ford Prefect by David Dixon, Mr. Prosser, Joe Melia, uh, Vogon Captain Martin Benson. We've got a picture of him, Vogon Captain. Rather uh, nice, that, isn't it? And uh, this is a picture of someone else. Got it? Oh, there. And we've got some pictures of the sets, which I don't know if this is the right way up. I hope it is. Uh, and here's another one. It looks very similar, uh, but uh, I can't see it too well from here. Um, anyway, all very promising. Um, the sets cost a fortune, it says. Ah, excuse me a moment. Hello? No. No, it isn't the saloon bar of the one ton. What? The BBC studio. Well, yes, I'm recording at the moment. Oh, that's very nice of you. Well, I do get recognized occasionally, of course, yes, but how very nice. Well, I'm so pleased. No, I didn't get the part because I'm Simon Jones's father. Cheek. Excuse me. Now, um, here are some bills. We've got one or two bills. I don't know whether they've been settled. Um, this is to impress you with the cost of this production. Arthur Dent's dressing gown, 30, 30. Ford Prefect's blazer, 70. Mr. Prosser's raincoat, 55. Workman's overalls, 40. That's one pound and 95 pence on, Oxfam, on the Oxfam uh, shop alone. And here we've got another. 75 days times five, that's 322 pounds, 46 pence. BBC Catering, supplying cups of tea to the production office. Uh, now, special note here about the computer animation. Confidentially, there wasn't really a computer available that could actually provide the standard of animation required. So Pierce Studios of Hanwell were contracted to provide this complex work. They worked day and night all of last Wednesday. By the way, Zephod Beeblebrox isn't in this particular episode, but you were pleased to hear that a two-headed actor has been found. However, I'm reliably told he's in two minds about doing it. Two minds. Now, I do hope you enjoy this mono headphone presentation of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Would you ask the weatherman if he's got the keys to the dressing room? Gone home.